Hey everyone, Twab is out, and this is actually a super, super juice one. Um, there's a lot of great information that we have in here, and typically I would try to go this as fast as humanly possible, we'll try to get you all the information, which I'm still going to try to do, but we are going to read through a lot today, so be ready for that. Um, a lot of it is weapon and armor sandbox changes, which is very, very nice as well, and there's some huge exotic ones as well that is actually going to be insane for pv and pvp so let's get right on into it so first off we're gonna go at the tldr buff some underutilized weapon archetypes scout rifles and heavy grenade launchers pve high impact autos lightweights buffed multiple exotic or perks fix some bug perks and updated some perk descriptions to be more accurate buffed multiple exotic weapons and added intrinsic anti-champion functionality to some worked a couple of exotic weapons whose functionality was causing issues and then updated the perk pools for heirs of eternity weapons and gave them a new origin trait now all this is for the next season coming um august 23rd so this will be implemented at the start of season 18 just so you all know and some global changes fixed an issue introduced in the 30th anniversary update that caused too much heavy ammo to drop when running double special weapons i don't know why you would fix that issue that seems like it was beautiful um but several weapon stats were previously hidden which made fully evaluating weapons difficult airborne effectiveness recoil zoom and aim assist are now visible in the weapon inspection screen very nice there um especially the airborne effectiveness one that's kind of been the big thing but that's kind of like the that's kind of the short version so now we're going to get into the nitty gritty and we're going to talk about every single thing that they did here i'll tell you pretty much like why it's good or why it's bad and just kind of give you my overall thoughts so scout rifles increase scout damage of all scouts versus minor enemies red bars in pve by 10 percent i don't even know if this is really necessary um for grandmasters it's going to be nice as well though because we'll probably have anti-barrier or unstoppable scout so that's good as well i really like that uh high impact 360s um they have good damage output, but low ease of use, leading them to underperform compared to other options in the same engagement ranges. Increased base stability stat of all non-sunset high impact auto rifles by 6 to 12. Depending on the weapon, numerically, this may seem like a small change, but it noticeably changes the feel of the weapons. This is very good because I feel like high impacts have always been in a bad state. They're just not too stable for the range, so this is a good change. Um, lightweight bows. The subfamily has languished compared to their higher damage counterparts for some time in part due to difficulty difficulty hitting perfect draw shots so we've made it a bit easier reduced base draw time by five percent from 612 milliseconds to 580 milliseconds increase the perfect draw window how long you can hold the bow before you gain to lose accuracy um 0.3 seconds to 0.5 on the low end and 0.55 to 0.8 on the high so and then hand cannons fixed iron promise zoom stat it is now 14 again that's nice uh, glaives, their interactions with some exotic armors can be confusing, so we've explicitly made some changes to align better with our stated goals. Glaive melee attacks can now activate the exotic perk, uh, armor perks on ACD, uh, ACD zero feedback fence, and Karnstein armlets and necrotic grips. Uh, this is actually a really huge change, um, in my opinion. Personally, I think glaives are too hot in PvP. I think that uh, the shield is pretty ridiculous and seeing as that i am a karnstein main it just made glaives a way better option if i ever to start decide to use them again or use them at all so this is awesome uh but it's also kind of worrying i don't want it to be super op but we'll see what happens uh breach grenade launchers concussion grenades can no longer roll in the magazine slot blinding grenades are a better option in the same slot that serves the same purpose and heavy gls these don't see a ton of support in PVE, so we hope this makes them feel a bit better as a DPS or yellow bar or yellow bar clearing option. Increased damage versus ten or majors and above by 10%, including Parasite, which is which does not need to do more damage. Or excluding. So this is good in my opinion, um, because I feel like the heavy GLs have been in a bad spot. Uh, hopefully anarchy is going to be a better better pick though anarchy is still good i hope now that if they this actually does get the 10 percent, which it should um this will make anarchy a much better option so i'm really excited for that and then the weapon pools they basically just updated the uh perks on the guns and the added an origin trait so that's awesome as well uh and then addressing an issue where Playlist, Crucibles, Gambit, and Strike Weapons weren't randomly or weren't randomizing individual perk columns, perks, counts correctly based on the number of resets. So, yeah, um, that's cool. Nothing too crazy with that, in my opinion. But when we get into the perks, I think this is where it gets really, really crazy. So, here we go. Uh, the Gambit and Iron Banner origin traits are too specific, specific to be generally useful. So, they are redesigning them. Invader Tracker, renamed Gun and Run, 
redesigned functionality to give a sprint speed increase on multi kills. That's actually a really decent origin trait. It's not bad at all. Uh, Skulking Wolf redesigned to activate on kills while at low health, so it works in all PvP now. This is very nice as well. Um, I think that the Skulking Wolf was a bad origin trait just because you could not use it in anything else. And same thing with the Gambit one. So this is very nice as well. I like those changes a lot. Um, Ambitious Assassin uh, has fallen behind perks with similar functionality, such as Overflow. We've adjust this to have a higher potential than before. Increase Magazine Overflow from 10% to 20% per kill on primary weapons only. Special and heavy weapons are still 10%. Increased overflow cap from 50% to 150%. This is very nice. And I think everybody could agree that if you have overflow and ambitious assassin in the same slot, most of the time you're going to want overflow. Actually, probably 99% of the time you're going to want overflow. So this is actually a pretty decent change. I have multiple grenade launchers that roll with ambitious assassin. So I think this will be a decent change for me. Wellspring had an internal cooldown to prevent it from activating too frequently. We are no longer feel this is needed. Cooldown has been removed, allowing for rockets and grenades to grenade launchers to return more ability energy when defeating groups with a single shot. Very nice. Perpetual motion was triggering frequently enough to be annoying. So we disabled audio slash visual feedback on perk activation. That's nice. Um, I didn't really notice that. So uh, that's cool. Lead from gold wasn't respecting the functionality of splitting the special ammo picked up when two special weapons were equipped. Now it gives the correct amount of ammo to each weapon when two special weapons are equipped. Decent change. And Concussion grenades can no longer roll on breach or breach grenade launchers, which is interesting because I don't know anybody who uses concussions, and uh, I think that blindings are better anyway, which they decided was the case as well. Vice Stinger was intended to grant ammo on weapons that support it in draw slash time, draw time, charge slash draw time on bows only. This was inadvertently applying to linear fusions as well, making it too strong for an origin trait on them. Very true. Fix the bug where it was applying a charge time reduction to linear fusions. It will correctly now refill the magazine for reserves when it triggers on these weapons. And then Zen Moment has always had a description that confused players, Particle Repeater 2. Their descriptions have been updated to say what they actually do. This is good. Um, though I don't know if it'll make me use Zen Moment over anything else, but it is what it is. So, exotic buffs. These are all getting some pretty decent buffs and i think are going to be very very nice starting off here with lem monarch getting overload uh, on the poison arrows that's so good lemon lemon was always really good anyway so this buff is going to make it insane in grandmasters and in normal or does anything with champions or overloads so that's very very nice overload bows have always been really good and i think this is going to put it a step higher than um uh trinity ghoul and uh tiku's divination though i do wish they would have done this for the rest of them but it is what it is thunderlord has intrinsic overload still wouldn't use it in, in a grandmaster or any high-end pve uh, i don't giving it overload is really not going to fix anything or make it usable in my opinion when you're trying to bake a boss but that's just me malfeasance now has intrinsic unstop and added plus 25 to the base oh, airborne is affecting the stat from 28 to 53 to match other precision hand cannons intrinsic bonus so that's crazy um the inner accuracy stuff is cool, so good change in my opinion. Witch Ender now has anti-barrier, increased number of hits versus most targets from two to three, more hits against vehicles, still against two, still two against players, increased damage versus champions, majors, and mini bosses by 10%, and draw time decrease from 828 to 820. This is a big change in my opinion. Uh, we might see Wish Ender meta in Grandmasters. I don't know. This will be crazy. Uh, it already hits like a truck as it is, so seeing it do 10% more against champs and majors and stuff, that is gonna be super cool. So that is nice. Tiku's Divination gets a free small buff from the global lightweight bow changes, so its draw time got decreased, which is nice, though I don't know if it really, I don't know if they needed it. I don't really use bows, so that's cool. This is a big one, in my opinion, is Legend of Acrius. This is falling behind other heavy short-range weapons and, and warrants a buff. Catalyst now grants Trench Barrel perk in addition to its other effects. Different versions of the exotic paired legendary weapons didn't have matching stats, so we've brought them up to parity to parade whatever this is huge um giving it trench barrel is very crazy considering i remember back in Gam gambit was either new or it might have been somewhat more recent i don't know legend of accuracy was actually the meta for gambit so seeing it get trench barrel that's gonna be crazy damage so i'm excited to see what that does and callus mini tool has a higher in in airborne effectiveness from 23 to 28 mini tool mita mini tool has is 13 to 14 zoom which is very nice for the mini tool the drang baroque now has a higher 
in air accuracy stat 21 to 23 sweet business 27 to 32 in air accuracy and fighting lion uh isn't receiving the buff as intended five percent to eight percent increase the grants time for the for the instant reload effect of the thin the herd from five to six seconds not a huge difference or change but i still think that it could uh be a problem in pvp but we'll see what happens um good players of fighting lion already use it so we'll see what happens uh reworks lord of wolves this is a big one Lord of Wolves has been a thorn in the side of PvP players, especially when paired with certain exotic armor pieces. We have changed the number of ammo it starts with and reduced the damage dealt to players. This is part one of a larger rework aimed at making it more viable PvE exotic without decreasing its effectiveness in PvP. So, decrease its starting ammo from 15 to 10. Thank you. Reduce the burst size. Uh, shots fired per trigger pull from 10 to 5 shots and release the wolves, the wolves is active. Thank you. Reduce the burst delay, the time between bursts by 60% when release the worst is active. Thank you. Decrease Lord of Wolves base damage by 20% by twenty percent now deals 35 per shot to the body in PvP. 44 with release the wolves active. Thank you. Increase damage in PvE by 20% to compensate. Nice. This is a big change. Um, Lord of Wolves has always been one of the most annoying shotguns to deal with in PvP. Uh, so this is a huge nerf in my opinion. Um, and I think that this is going to rein it in a lot better. So I'm a big fan of this nerf. Uh, the next one, however, mm, I don't know yet. Well, uh, we'll see how it goes. But so, Dead Man's Tale. The cranial spike perk was causing issues with unintended damage scalers against players and generally felt unpredictable both to use and, fi and to fight against. It also wasn't quite landing the hip firing cowboy rifle fantasy as strongly as we wanted to, so we reworked it to lean into a fast firing hip fire. So, just to say now, I think this is somewhat smart and I think it is a decent decision though this is my favorite gun in destiny 2 so i'm kind of sad that it's not gonna be able to tap any more spoilers but so change cranial spikes effects cranial spike no longer buffs damage versus players instead it grants increased reload aim assist and range per stack this isn't actually that bad of a change in my opinion i think you can sacrifice the damage for range and aim assist and reload i think that might help then it'll just make it a lot easier to hit those hip fire shots so that is definitely nice i think now because of this change uh, my snapshot roll might actually be retired and we might actually see a Vorpa roll come out, but I don't know. It still grants additional damage versus PVE combatants. And upon reaching max stacks of cranial spike, the catalyst will now increase hip fire RPM by 50 by 50, i.e. it will fire at 180 RPM, but will deal reduced damage per bullet 20% decrease. So this is what bothers me. Um, this is what bothers me because like I think the increasing the hip fire is cool but the 20% damage reduction that's going to be around it's probably going to do around 70 crit. So you might actually still be able to three tap with it um but you have to be way more precise. But what bothers me is it like I love two tapping with this thing. That was my thing with the dead man's tail. Uh it was so much fun to use that way and I still think it's still going to be really, really good. And maybe even with Charge of Light, you can still two-tap and Radiant and stuff. So I think you're still going to be able to do it. However, I do. It just kind of saddens me that I'm not getting that buff anymore. But it is what it is. Collective Obligation. We're aiming to make the exotic perk effects easier to activate and more effective in PvE. And increase the Void Leech Timer to 15 seconds in PvE activities. PvP, it's still the same. Remove the cooldown. Add a 20% damage bonus against PvE combats only while Void Leech is active. Takes less hits to fully charge Void Leech. Kills against debuff targets instantly charge Void Leech. Void Leech is also instantly charged with your character. Is affected by Void debuffs. Does not work if hitting yourself with your own suppressing grenade. And fix the bug where Umbral, un or Umbral Sustenance was activating with non-Void Overshields. Uh, I have no idea if this is a good change. I actually don't have this gun, so I literally couldn't tell you. I think overall it does sound better because you do have to... I heard that it takes a lot to actually get the gun's full potential and making it easier to activate in pve would be very very good but now going into the armor in up in update 6.2.0.1 um we will be reducing the effectiveness of damage resistances used by on the oculus and whisper chains pvp pv damage resistance is unchanged so tier 1 10 percent to 2.5 tier 2 15 to 5 20 percent 7.5 and 25 to 10 percent this is good uh this is busted in my opinion so on the oculus hunters sorry dude sucks to suck and uh that's really it for that things we are looking at addressing the future reducing shotgun spread randomness reduced reducing bow swapping effectiveness thank god 
increasing trace rifle ease of use, introducing the full auto setting. I really wish we would get that um, sooner, but it is what it is. Reducing the ability of snipers to shoot through flinch and PvP. Uh, examining some small targeted balance changes to certain PvP outliers, pulses, pulses with out of band effectiveness, high impact scout rifle ease of use, and precision fusion rifle ease of use, allowing glaive interactions with some exotic armors that buff melees, fixing glaive hit detection, reworking some enhanced perks, and folding spec mods into the base perks. That is it with all of the patch notes, really, and what they plan on doing. So that is very nice. And there's still like a few things like claim your stuff. And obviously we have the movies of the week and the art of the week. They always are very, very nice. I recommend looking at them and watching them. But that is actually it when it comes to the TWAB, everybody. Those are pretty big changes in my opinion. And I think it's a lot to digest. But I think in the end we're going to have a super, super fun meta to play around with. But we will have to see when season 18 rolls around. But thank you all so very much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.